you're going to be prayed on here. Well, good afternoon from Pioneer High School. As your Trojans are playing a rare regular season 1 p.m. Thursday game, it uh, feels a little strange um, as it's not even a Saturday later in November when we're more used to afternoon high school football games, uh, but a 1 p.m. Thursday game here on this fall break against the Pioneer Pleasant Vale Mustangs. Just a short drive from home. Took us about 24 minutes or so to get down here. As the, the temperature has warmed up, my watch says 66 degrees, but we are dealing with, I would, I don't know, I'm not a, a weather station, but I would guess the wind blowing out of the south is, would be tw roughly 25 miles per hour right now with uh, absolutely zero wind break. As those of you who are watching, might be familiar with the Pioneer football uh, field. There is a, a black top on the south side of the field and a, a wheat field that there are no trees for at least a mile. So the wind will be a factor today and uh, especially with how OBA um, Likes to go to the air and rely on the the arm of freshman quarterback Cal Kayot. Uh, it looks like the Mustangs have won the toss and will defer to the second half. And so OBA will receive and will be... Uh, I Unless I misunderstood, I think maybe their announcer announced it incorrectly. Um, so uh, the the signal I interpreted was Pioneer won the toss, deferred to the second half, which gives OBA the choice of what they want to do. And any time the other team wins the toss and defers, you always want the ball because um, the the winning deferring team gets their choice at the beginning of the second half. And so if OBA would have def uh, would have elected to kick, we would have given Pioneer the ball twice. Um, I know that because I was a part of a game one time where the captain mistakenly made that incorrect call. And uh, let's just say Coach wasn't happy. I wasn't the guy. <laughs> But I know that rule because I've seen it happen. It's rare, uh, but if the deferring team chooses to kick, then that gives, or sorry, if the losing toss team chooses to kick, that gives the deferring team uh, the ball both halves. You can probably see a QR code at the bottom right of your screen, and that is that is a link. I know it doesn't look quite like much, but I, I wanted to throw something up there really fast uh, to, to give viewers at home the opportunity to also, uh, maybe on a different device, log in and watch OBA Varsity Girls Volleyball Team in the first round of the state tournament at Sand Springs. They are kicking, or uh, uh, I guess tipping off maybe for volleyball. I don't know exactly <laughs> that term, uh, but right now, 1 p.m. starts for both games, and um, it is a pay-per-view uh, link through NFHS, 
and uh, I believe I saw eleven ninety nine for a, for a month. So if you pay the eleven ninety nine, you could watch all three games if we if we play well enough to go to the state title game on Saturday. So it would be a a, a one time twelve dollar fee. So uh, number fifty five, I don't have a I don't have a roster right in front of me. Ari pounds. Back deep and takes that kick up to the 25-yard line. I am joined here by Wyatt. He's running the camera. We, You might imagine with fall break and then the volleyball state game, uh, manpower is a, a an issue today. And so we're up here in this small press box room, and Wyatt's operating the camera, and I'm doing play-by-play, -play and he's my color guy. Silas Rudd. Uh, takes the handoff, tackled by uh, number 55. I'll get that roster up. Uh, looks like Silas is tackled for a, about a four-yard loss on the play. That's going to bring bring up, may yeah, uh, three and a half-yard loss. So second and 13 or 14 here for the Trojans. Last week for the Trojans, I uh, <clears throat> last week for the Trojans, I did. Uh, keep stats for you guys, um, but this week I do not have a piece of paper or anything to keep track, but I will try to um, do my best in keeping stats for you guys, but that was only a three, four-yard gain. Yeah, three or four-yard gain on the reception. Let's call it a four-yard gain because it's just past the yeah the the first down, or the, the pylon, uh, the marker, uh, that back one, and so that was freshman Judah Hopper on that reception, tackled by the same number 55, uh, Josh Krieger. What I'm hoping to see um, for this game is less freshman mistakes um, because they have been able to get more reps this game. They have been get, they have been able to get more reps, uh, not this game, this week or this season, sorry, um, and. Uh, each week we just see a bunch of mistakes made by um, a lot of these freshmen that come out there. Maybe it's just jitters or um, uh, nervousness and just things like that. Um, so I'm just hoping that we uh, can cut down on the mistakes. And that even goes for other uh, grades as well, not just freshmen. But I'm just saying freshmen because they're like half our team out here right now. Yep. Definitely a young rebuilding season. Fourth down and nine and a half. Um, and and Schneider's punt goes off the back of a Trojan and uh, doesn't even make it to the first down marker. So Pioneer's going to have a first down and 10 from the Trojan 31-yard line. Uh, so this, this fall break game here that we're looking to uh, – Pioneer's been struggling this season as well, and so – this has been a, a talk all year about uh, we have an opportunity to come out here and play well and uh, flag on that play. That that was uh, ran by number five. If I can, uh, their, their roster is not in order. Branson Doyle, uh, flag on the play. Jacoby Justice on that stop, and that is a hold against the Mustangs. One thing that... Um uh, we haven't been able to do well this year is um, really punting is one of the things. And as you see here, um, we were probably hoping to get the ball past the 40, like get at least a 10 yards, but this one only fell about five. Uh, maybe wind had some variable to do with that, trying to set it up. And the line also didn't get much time for Coy to get the ball out. That's number three, tackled again by Jacoby Justice. Number three is senior Christian Morrow. Um, and uh, looks like that it's going to bring, bring up a second down and 16. So that's going to be a four-yard pickup for the Mustangs after that hold. Um, Jacoby, sophomore, linebacker in there. 
Um, I know we've struggled this season, but he is a positive, bright light for the OBA football team. Christian Morrow, Silas Rudd, Ian Burnett, and I can't make – and Coy Schneider on that tackle. They don't even get up back to the original um, – First down pylon with the, uh, uh, the the chain. And so it's uh, third down and 12 coming up. And and you brought up the wind earlier on that, on that punt. And on, I think, maybe that third down play, I think that played a factor into Chaos Pass, too, because let's see who's on that tackle that is Judah Hopper on that tackle and number 13 for the Mustangs is uh, I hope I pronounce this right Zia Fafa and, uh, and so fourth down and five uh, maybe closer to four and a half coming up for the Mustangs and neither team has moved the ball much. Uh, the ball has just stayed in this side of, uh, really, that exact spot of the field the whole yeah. game. And um, timeout Pioneer as there are eight minutes and 55 seconds remaining in this first quarter. One thing I'm uh, really looking forward to is to see this uh, Trojans defense um, that hasn't been our uh, bright and shining spot this season as our defense has kind of been um, off and on on good and bad. Um, and so I'm really hoping that this game, at least as of right now, we held them to a fourth down, fourth and five. Um, after that holding, we the first three, uh, or until they got to that third down play, we were doing really good on the outside contains. They try to move it around to the outside, and that was something that we struggled with. So right. you know that coaches right. definitely hammered outside contain this week. And in addition to that, you can look at their size. They outsize us. And and uh, as, as I say that, and as you said about the outside contain, their number um, looked like number five. Um, if I remember the... The last name, Branson Doyle, uh, took it out on the right side for the Mustang touchdown. And uh, two-point conversions, no good. Junior Nelson and Silas Rudd, who's really, as a sophomore, stepped up and, and filled in um, really well. Uh, as somebody who's had an opportunity to uh, to be called upon when he may not have been expected to be called upon at the beginning of the year, um, and and I've called his name a few times tonight. So six to nothing, Pioneer. Once again, reminder: you you could log on to different uh, devices and maybe have two OBA events going on at at the same time on different devices to keep track of of the kids going out and participating so that QR code I'm gonna keep it up there the whole game uh, just so you have a, an opportunity to log on and root for the varsity volleyball team um, great group of senior girls and uh, who are are going out there for hopefully three more matches uh, counting today. I believe we're playing Christian Heritage over there in Sand Springs in this first round. Ari Pounds lets it go over and into the end zone for a touchback. Uh, I haven't seen many of those this year. I don't think no, that, this might have been our first. I think the 30 mile an hour wind, had, <laughs> that south wind had something to do with that. It just kept sailing. Um, it kind of takes us back to two football seasons ago when Harry Nunez would send it into the end zone almost every kick yeah. for a touchback. As uh, Small eight-man schools don't see kickers quite like Harry Nunez was 
uh, very often. And so, but as I was saying earlier, uh, Pioneer, number 55, number 5, um, number 20, number 15, uh, 64. Yeah, they're, they're, they outsize us um, at many positions. Um, really, really, we just have Ian Burnett and Junior Nelson that are comparative in size. And so uh, hopefully where we lack in size, we can make up with uh, quickness, um, accuracy of our pass placements. and But this first quarter of action, we're going into this tough wind. Nice, nice pass and, and way to adjust and go get that ball by Coy Schneider and takes us close to the first down marker, but I think he's going to be about six inches short. Uh, no, they are going to, they are signaling for a first down, and so that is a first down and 10 for the Trojans. Hopefully when, uh, at the end of this quarter, when the Trojans get the ball back, we'll be able to see um, some more uh, pass plays because right now as, right. I'm, as I'm observing their corners they don't seem like that might be their strongest suit it looks more like their line is because of their size flag on that play nice way to battle I mean Silas Rudd he could have just gone down for no gain on the play wouldn't have been a loss but it wouldn't have been any gain but he fought for three yards and and that's going to be, I believe, a hold on the Trojans backing us up, 10. But that like, that hold had nothing to do with Silas Rudd gaining three to three and a half yards on that carry. That was all him keeping the feet moving. That was textbook yeah. of what coaches teach young guys, young running backs, on keeping the feet moving. Great, just great carry by him. Yeah. Might see another pass play here. Looks like we're getting to the formation to throw a pass. And the going into the wind, it affects the kind of passes that we can that we can um, throw. We can't go deep, and we're also without our um, kind of our deep ball threat as of late with uh, Ben Burl. Yeah, uh, we're without him. Um, he's on the sidelines. That reception was by Andrew Campbell um, for ended up being a five-yard gain, so second down and 15. Judah Hopper. Looked like he slipped there, trying to plant that foot to keep going and just slipped, and that gave the Pioneer guy enough time to just tackle him for a like, four, no, yeah, four-yard four gain. Four-yard gain, so third and 11. And, and really, against this strong a win, that's about, like, out routes, short short routes, uh, you know, five, ten yeah. yard routes, um, either out routes or in the middle. That's about all you can do. Uh, comeback routes of some sort, because um, this wind is it's getting after it. Coy Schneider along the outside, tackled by. Um, let's see, number. Let me get my phone out here. Um, number 20, Coughlin O'Donnell. And number 10, freshman Oliver Silva. I kind of like what coaches are doing here. Um, showed some pass plays um, in the same formation as we ran, and then they'll just make, make the – make Pioneers defense think that, oh, they're going to throw another pass here and then just run it around the outside. Right. What, how uh, Coy was able to get six or seven yards. I'm not sure exactly where it was, but about six or seven yards there on that play. Yeah, I think it was six because it was third and 11, and now it's fourth down and five. Yeah. And so we're, we're chipping away. And uh, on this very, you know, one thing I'm noticing, they're not quite on camera because – the, the way we have our, our camera just angled toward our huddle right now, uh, as, and <laughs> we haven't had an opportunity to take the camera left, but um, on this odd 1 o'clock Thursday fall break game, we are, in fact, I'll, I'll just swing over there, um, very, 
well attended by the OBA faithful. Um, and uh, with two events, especially something as significant as a state first round playoff game for the volleyball girls, you just never know exactly how well attended either event will be. Um, people people leaving for fall break and going on trips and and stuff like that and and uh, as well as this is an odd year as far as state volleyball because usually it's it would have been last weekend um, but uh, due to fall break scheduling calendar differences the OSSAA scheduled it this weekend intended for Judah Hopper incomplete Andrew Campbell was back there as well and and kind of, he kind of split the difference so he either he either was going for Campbell and the wind dropped the pass short or uh, Cal uh, adjusted a little too much for the wind and it still can still sailed on him uh, intending it for Hopper but e either way first down and 10 for the Mustangs from the Trojan 35. And I'm not mad about that drive. That drive was good. No, we had, we had a yeah. lot of good plays. I just feel like this wind was very, uh, like was uh, restricting us to do a lot more things that we could do, just because we're more of a pass-heavy right. team. And so it was just kind of restricting us and how they have this beat on the line. We we've seen like a couple run plays and stuff go, and they haven't really gone our way just because of how big and how good this pioneer uh, defensive line is. And so um, able to get through and. Uh, things like that, and so like we're primarily pass. And I'm I'm wondering if maybe when we swap quarters and swap ends of the field, um, just having the deep ball threat may even open up the run for us a little bit more. Coy Schneider on that tackle, um, number three. I let's see here. Christian Morrow. First down and ten on the last ta on the last play before that. Once again, Silas Rudd and Ari Pounds, two sophomores who have stepped up. Murrow, Jacoby Justice on that on that stop. That's something we've struggled with a lot is wrapping up. Yeah. Um, what I think happened there is. Um, uh, one of our guys, or I think it was Jacoby who made the tackle, was running with him the whole time and then finally like was able to make his way down to the feet to wrap him up and then yeah. to have someone else hit him. Um, so what we've been doing this past couple games is just l quite literally tackling their shoulders instead of and trying to just force them down with just their weight instead of uh, using the legs because stop the legs, you stop the run. Right. Doyle on the carry, um, and uh, Silas Rudd, Ari Pounds, and Jacoby Justice on the stop, and Ari Pounds is limping off, and he looks like he is hurting, and it wouldn't be cramps um, with a cooler day this late in the season. I think he got tangled up with somebody. And that quarterback keeper by Fafa taking it into the end zone for another Mustang touchdown. And right now the score is 12 to nothing with the two-point conversion attempt coming up. And that touchdown play, you just gotta, you gotta stay home. I didn't quite see it because I was looking back at the camera during that little play thing. Uh, but what it looked like what happened was is they went to the, uh, they faked to the right side and he swung it around the left. Um, at least that's what it looked like to me. Um, I missed a little bit of it, but because everyone went right and then he was just able to sneak by left, uh, looked more like an option type of a thing. But um, you got to stay home. There was nobody there. Nobody. Right. Like, where was the corner? Where was the tight end? It looked like everyone thought the ball went to the right side, and they swung around the left. 
And so what they what the Trojans really got to do is stay home. Yeah. Do your job. If do, you do your job, someone else will back you up. And they if they do their job, and trust just your teammates. Um, and that really is kind of um, nice play by Coy Schneider. Um, the quarterback got the ball off, but he definitely affected how long it was in the air yeah. with a foot tackle chasing him down from behind. Um, but defensively, it's just like you were saying, um, the the biggest issue of uh, staying home is learning to trust your teammates. Yeah. Um, because uh, every position defensively on the football field has a job. They have a territory to cover, uh, a job to do, and um, and it, it, it's that process of learning to trust the other seven guys causing me to stay home and do my job because I don't feel like I need to go into their territory and do what I need uh, and, and get out of mine. And so, um, and that's kind of typical of a young team. Yeah. Um, as, as football players, especially freshmen and sophomores who, who haven't gotten a lot of high school football experience, as they get that experience and they learn to stay home and, um, and trust each other a little bit better, and so, hopefully, that's part of the the learning, growing process of this team. Yeah, Schneider just about, just about thought he was going to to get a return there, and at the last minute it sailed just another yard or so on him, and and uh, thankfully he was able to get it in the end zone for a touchback. So first down and ten. Trojans from their own 25 and we have not gotten into like we have not crossed midfield this football game which is kind of typical of when the wind's blowing like this too yeah let's hope that there's about three minutes and 22 seconds left of this quarter and that's going to be a flag on um uh, number three murrow uh Kayot, really against this wind, a nice pass, pretty accurate, um, and and Schneider was going and getting it, and there was just a tug. As yeah. uh, and if there wasn't a, I think he, I think he, I think he fell and tripped. Yeah, tripped uh, and Schneider, and so kind of wrapped his arms around yeah. him as he was falling. I think he tried to to kind of. Pull that grip back, but it, it the the damage was done and the flag was out. And so, first down Trojans from the 35. I believe this is the farthest we've gotten so far. Um, Coach Chaos yelling about something, and apparently he didn't agree with something going on out there. And Silas Rudd about seven yards on that play. That was a good cut up by him. Yes, he's no. Well, they they spotted him about a yard short of what we thought so a six yard gain second down and four coming up but yeah silas rudd is he is turning into a pretty good football player uh getting called upon this and, season and yeah and just a sophomore he has two more bright years ahead of him yeah i'm looking at let's see they give it back to rudd i believe Going to take us about a yard shy of the first down marker. Third down and one and a half. Yeah, they give it back to Rudd, and Rudd was gobbled up immediately at the uh, line of scrimmage and yet still fights his way forward to get about three yards on that. And that's that's something I, uh, Coach Roth and I have pointed out in this past couple of games at home um, was – Silas Rudd being able, when he gets hit, his yards after contact yep. are most of the time more than what he got before yes. contact. He just keeps fighting and fighting. If you watch him, those feet never stop. No, they don't. And uh, it's making him be quite a weapon so far on this drive. Yes. And here we are almost across midfield. Um, 
Well, I guess I was looking at the 45, but up to the 46, and that effort is good for an OBA first down and 10. And so um, we are four yards away from crossing midfield, and um, this is the this is actually the most midfield we've been. Um, and so that that positive sustained drive for just a, a a few plays against this win that you were referring about last possession, um, we're continuing that this possession. Yeah. Intended for Andrew Campbell, incomplete pass. It was a little high. I, I think uh, Cal is uh, against this wind. It's just kind of hard to, you know you have to adjust. And so you yeah. have to put more umph on it than you normally would. And whether the wind is like gusting and, and or or it's just him trying to adjust for how much extra to put on. The ball comes out on that sack. Flag on the play, so I don't know if this is going to stand, but that's that fumble's picked up and taken to the end zone. By there, is, there is face mask there. Coughlin O'Donnell. It looked like uh, I did see that one. They, they just uh, signaled to the uh, white hat uh, about sending it back, and he did the little face mask grabbing motion. And so uh, it is coming back. So, yep, that must be on Pioneer. Yeah, I did see that uh, he he grabbed, coming around the back, trying to grab, I'm guessing, the ball and try to knock it loose because he's holding it back ready to throw. And uh, just when he goes to grab, he just grabs that face mask and pulls Cal's head down, and then the ball gets knocked out because of that. Okay. And, uh, and courtesy of that 15-yard face mask penalty, we are now in Mustang territory. Um, with a 12 to nothing deficit against Pioneer. So uh, ball is first and 10 at the um, Mustang 39-yard line. And there's 50, 57 seconds left of this quarter, so we might see yeah. them back on the other side of the field, except closer with the wind. Oh, oh no. high snap. Just throw it away. There you go. Um, uh, it's intentional grounding. Yep, yep. Uh, so they're going to. The referees, we had two. We had the white hat and a black hat. Both called that. They had to, you know, they they saw the ball land. They did their typical kind of scanning to where a, where a uh, eligible receiver would be in the area, finding none, and here came the flag. So Yeah. Um, and uh, this is one of the things that have really stopped the Trojans' offense. Sometimes we'll, we'll uh, go off strong. Like this drive, we've been doing really good at a lot of different things. And then just one mistake sets us back all of our progress. We have uh, first and, let's see, like, 30 yards roughly just because that intentional grounding and uh i wouldn't say that's even cal's fault um i would say he he would have gone down if he'd gone down he wouldn't have had it where it's at now uh because the intentional grounding's from the spot of the thing and then they move him back a uh, spot of when he let go and then move it back more right so if he just went down and took the sack it would have been better for us but still the high snap we just can't have Oh, Silas Rudd might. He's going to get chased down from behind. But he. Great job he by just, Rudd. He just made up that intentional grounding yeah. penalty. Yeah. Um, just a yard shy of the original line of scrimmage prior to the penalty. Um, and so third down and 11. But once again, yards after contact. Contact was made at the line of scrimmage. Rudd just bounced off, kept his feet moving, and took off for a um, 20-some yard gain. And that is that is timeout pioneer with 15 seconds remaining in the first quarter. I'm not... I believe Pioneer. I'm not sure why they took that. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Pioneer noticed that um, the coaches 
were waiting for the clock to run out so that uh, they could switch sides. And I'm guessing okay. Pioneer didn't want them to get any. Good observation. I'm pretty sure that because uh, I saw Coach Cal, he was looking up at the clock, and he just he wasn't even looking at his play sheet. He was just looking up at the clock and then just like signaling to the Trojans to like come here because we they had uh uh because they were just gonna let the clock run out, and it looked like Pioneer was like, no, we're not gonna let that happen. So that Trojans will have to take one, maybe two more, or one more play um, against the wind before they uh, move it to the opposite side of the field to where we have the wind. And since we're a pass-heavy um, team, I'm guessing they're not wanting us to uh, have more extra plays or something right. on that, this on this drive. That makes sense. And it would be. It's a pretty smart call. It's just that's their second time out already, and so next quarter they only have one more. And if, if there was their first or something, I would say like that's that's a pretty decent call. But as of right now, I say I, I probably wouldn't have taken it. Right? It, it, is it worth it is at it, that point? Because will this will this work seconds? out? And um, I mean, you might want or, uh, like they might want uh, timeouts when they have to go against the wind yeah. offensively. So, um, and that is going to fall incomplete with nine seconds remaining. Uh, I just got word uh, our volleyball ladies are up 8 to 7 in the first set. Fourth and about 11 for the Trojans after that incomplete pass. Um, I did see, I saw the look that he was looking at, just overthrew him. It was wide open. Um, he, he cooked his... Uh, corner that was chasing him i don't remember who exactly was he was throwing to but um i think it was intended for coy i think uh, so too but just put too much umph on the ball uh, trying to see if uh you know if when he threw it uh so that's a timeout Co coach Kao wanted to call a timeout here because Nine seconds remaining again in this first quarter going against the wind. He wants the opportunity to have the ball when we swap ends of the field and have the wind to our advantage, but we have a fourth down and 11 coming up. So, yeah. so he's wanting to, to take advantage of this and get this first down so that, so that we can take this ball into the second quarter. And this is where the Pioneer timeout has actually paid off so far for them. It's... Uh, that one play that we threw was a pass play, and so the ball got incomplete. Now we have, um, instead of one other snap, if we ran it up the middle or something with Rudd, maybe getting a couple more yards, we could be closer to that first down and be fourth and five or something like that. Um, and the clock would run out, and then we'll move it over there at the end of the quarter. Or uh, the pass play, incomplete, falls, uh, yeah, incomplete, and now the stops the clock. So um, the Trojans now have to now have to make a fourth down and 11 against the wind instead of running the ball up the middle or something, letting the clock time out, and then moving it over and then trying again with the wind at her back. Okay, Hopper split out left. Coy Schneider in the slot going in motion. Andrew Campbell split out right, and that that uh, was bobbled and, and flag on the play, but... Uh, I don't know if that was complete. That looked like it bounced off the grass, but they called it. It's probably irrelevant anyway. As it's probably there is holding. A flag on the play. Holding. Yep, holding. And so that bad snap, um, bobbled shotgun snap. Um, that holding will back us up, and yeah. then we'll get the ball back. At, we'll uh, there, it's the end of the quarter, so that happened at the end of the quarter, so now they're going to switch it. So now we might actually lob the ball down the field with yeah, the wind. So it might actually work out better for us. And if we don't and, if we don't get it, it's we're punting, and so we could punt it clear to well, the – Well, no, it's fourth down. Oh, so it'll be a turnover on <laughs> downs, but you're giving Pioneer the ball yeah. against the yeah. wind, and so um, that – Coach Chaos now thinking, you know – Giving, giving Pioneer a dose of their own medicine in a way that that everything we had to deal with in the first quarter. I can't see Coach Chaos going for it on fourth and uh, 
21. I I don't know. I at the 50 yard line with, though. With the wind that we have in our favor now and our and speed of our wide receivers versus you know, we the could, corners and of Pioneer, but my only fear is is if we if we incomplete if this pass or if we surprise run it up the middle and we don't get it, uh, they have it at their 50 yard line now. Right, and, and but they're going against the wind, and they haven't thrown the ball. They've been very run heavy, and both yeah, their touchdowns have right. came off of long, which is long passes, irrelevant. And so I would, and which yeah, it, the wind doesn't even become a factor at that point. And so, um, I'm saying it's kind of a gamble here, um, of whether we get it or if we get it, it's good. Yeah, we get the we get it, maybe. Uh, Okay, we are showing yeah. punt here. Coy Schneider back deep to punt. Um, and good punt. That's a great punt. Come back, come back, and come back, come back. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Oh. Going to go into the end zone. That makes it really tough, especially for a high school punter um, that just doesn't have the practice and the experience and training to – to put a spiral on that yeah. to where it can kick it back um, against this wind. He had about a 60-yard punt. Yeah, you're, you're kind of expecting that it's going to roll toward the end zone there. Yeah. 13-16 uh, to 16, Christian Heritage. Uh, I believe it's Christian Heritage we're playing um, in the first set over in Sand Springs. That was a good job by the Trojans being able to just find that ball and just uh, tackle them up for only a gain, to only allow them a gain of four. Um, Doyle is a big running back for yes, them he compared is. to our corners. And uh, uh, we really, our only size is our three defensive linemen. And so he's a big running back. Oh, and they. Judah Hopper chasing him down at the 41-yard line. Um, that was number 20, uh, I believe. Coughlin O'Donnell, I believe, is his name. Yeah, Coughlin O'Donnell. Uh, crosses into OBA territory, and you're 100% right, Wyatt. Um, the wind affects them less because they're run heavy. Yeah. And uh, and it affects us more for sure. And, and our defense oh. really ah. Oh. And that is Christian Murrow, and for the There's touchdown. A flag. But that is a hold against the Mustangs. Um, what they got bringing that back? Yeah, thankfully. One thing I noticed there by our corner uh, was that. He he did go for the legs, like good. He went for the legs, but he dove at the legs, at a guy that's like you're able at a at a guy that's small and pretty quick looking and like agile and can move left and right fast. So if you dive at that leg, he just has to move over to the left or move over to the right. And so what you need to do is break down and slow him down. And if you just dive at someone moving running full speed like they did, he'll just go right past you and cook you. Several Trojans on that stop. Um, uh, that is Doyle. No. No, that's number two. That's two. That's a new guy. At least number I think so. Number two is Gabe Fannin. Um, There's an and, uh, pioneer. You know, one thing I want to point out is in this rebuilding year, and it looks like there's going to be a – Oh, there's, a, there's we, an injured pioneer. We have an injured Mustang on the ground. Or Mustang. Um. One thing I, I want to point out is early on in the early on in the season when we knew this might be a, a struggle uh, at times, especially against a lot of teams in our schedule, um, like the Ceilings and the Lavernes, and they are calling the ambulance out on the field right now. So we're going to – What number is that? Um, I can't see. 77, 77? I believe. Um Oh, 
I'm wondering what happened. Uh, and and I don't so, think they're – are they calling the ambulance? It doesn't look like it. They might have just been calling oh, a parent or something. Oh, maybe they're calling his dad out. They were – the ambulance is over here to their left. Yo, yes, the medics are coming out on the field oh, okay. with their jump kits. No – no cot or anything um, at this time. I wonder if he... Oh, that that is... Uh, yeah, that's Pioneer Superintendent that we thought might be apparent. Um, and so the medics are coming out on the field. I wonder if he got hit in the... Like maybe knocked out or hit in the head or something because he's laying there like... Unless the coach looks like he's holding a knee. Yeah. His I knee. think it's a leg. Or leg, yeah. And it was more immediate, too. It wasn't like, are you sure? Are you good? It was more like he noticed something immediately wrong with his knee. Or leg or something. Looks like they're sending two people maybe to go grab something. So we're just going to we're just going to kind of sit here, um, let them work on this young man. They're going to do an IV on him. Um, as as the medics continue to, to do their work on him, we're just going to kind of uh, let, let it happen, and, and uh, we'll come back here whenever they are. Um, have completed what they need to do on him.
And we are back as they are uh, loading the young man on the the ambulance uh, right at this moment in time. And um, and so we cut away just to, to make sure we were pre uh, protecting his uh, privacy and uh, dignity as much as possible. And so um, we, we believe it's some sort of leg injury on him. Um, and uh, it was number number 77 junior Tyson Castile and um, and so uh, and it it's interesting to see after you see this in college you see this in the pros um, uh, he he is he is fine uh, with the exception of some sort of leg injury so um, uh, they're obviously going to be taking him to the hospital for some sort of exam and treatment. But um, you see this, like I said, in the college and pros, when there's some sort of injury like this um, that stops play for a while, sometimes it's a leg, sometimes it's a neck or whatever, um, but they, they cart players off. Um, uh, how will our players respond? Because, you know, there were – there were 21 other players on the field when when an, an injury like that takes place. And so your question is always, you know, it goes through a, any kid's mind, could have been me. And so we'll see how our, our guys respond after a, a big break like that with an injury. And that's, um, that's Doyle on that carry with – Silas Rudd and Judah Hopper and I think uh, Coy Schneider was on that carry. Um, and to be honest, Wyatt, um, oh, that is a flag on the play. Another and holding. I lost track of what we were as far as second and whatever. Um, it was roughly a four-yard gain on that play, I think. And it was so going to be third and about six. It now it's like going to be second and 23. 20 yeah. Second and 22, second and 23. Murrow on the carry. Dragged down for a loss by Jacoby Justice. Another flag. Might be another holding. And if, if this is another Pioneer penalty which i'm kind of wondering if it's going to be we're fixing to find out there is no they're waving it off um i am i was kind of wondering you know the first play and potentially the second play after action resumed yeah you know these these pioneer kids that was their teammate and friend that that just went off in the ambulance and uh and so it takes a little bit to let the mind get back into what you're doing. Yeah. Especially for kids. And so third down and long. Murrow on the carry. Tack or nope. Missed tackle by Schneider. And Murrow's going to go for a touchdown. I don't see a flag. Um, and so that. That uh, that touchdown will stand, and that's going to make it 18 to zero with a first or with a two point conversion upcoming. 9:27 remaining in the first half of action. That's uh, what happened. There was everyone saw that he was running to the right side, so he ran to the right side, and everyone ran past him. Yeah, they're, they were trying to go to where they were. They were at where he was gonna go. And then he just looked to his right and was like, and just noticed that, hey, if I just cut up the right side, no one's there. There was nobody there to uh, to protect that outside. And so he just cut it back, and it was wide Two open. Two-point conversion attempt on the run by number 64. And that's Remy Stevens for the Mustangs. And that makes the score here in the second quarter 20 to nothing. Um, I One thing I was – I was in the process of beginning to, to say or at least think about saying before the injury took place is as um, 
even early on this season when we knew our, our struggles were going to uh, to happen this season with with the ceilings and the Lavernes on the schedule and, and our rebuilding year. Um, uh, we, we looked ahead to this Pioneer game as a game that we were hoping was going to be uh, – we were hoping we'd be up on them twenty to nothing at this point. Yeah. Um, but if you if you think about all the injuries that we have had, yeah. Early in the season, when we were looking ahead at this game, um, that's a different team. Um, we've Wyatt, we've lost you. We've lost um, right now. We've lost Ethan Ash. We've lost Ben Burl. Um, Liam, Liam Barry, um, perhaps uh, Ari. Yeah, Ari. Ari is down in this game right now. Oh, and that kick does not go far. And our, oh boy, that's a that's a young guy mistake right there. Um, so they, what happened was was the wind caused that kick to hang in the air. Um, and our boys were looking at it, and I think they were thinking it was a punt because you approach a punt and a kickoff entirely differently. From, um, from a receiving team standpoint, the, a punt you need to get totally away. Get away from it. Don't touch it at all. Let the other team down it. A kick, once it's gone 10 yards, is like an onside kick. And, and, he, and Doyle's going to go for it here. And so that was essentially an onside kick that was a live ball. And we, instead of getting away from it, we needed to hop on it. Yeah. And we didn't. And, and that must one play later, us. it is now 26 to nothing. Pioneer with a another two point conversion coming up, and and we could find ourselves with most of this second quarter left to play down twenty eight to nothing, and that's what's that's exactly what's going to happen. And as Doyle goes in, and um, that Wyatt was a sixteen point swing in a matter of seconds. Yeah, because. Um, Virtually no time ticked off the clock in the kick. Maybe, what, two seconds, three seconds at the most? And then ten seconds at the most on that on that first down touchdown. And so in a matter of 15 seconds, and I'm being, I mean, I, I'm being conservative with that estimate, 16-point swing. So we went from 12 to nothing to, to 28 to nothing in a matter of 15 seconds on the clock. Yeah. Um, I did receive word that OBA ladies dropped the first set uh, to Christian Heritage. So, hopefully our guys don't make that mistake twice. I am seeing a little bit of adjustment in position, maybe personnel. Yeah, personnel as well as Cal Chaos steps in, takes that because, yeah, it, that's just, that was kind of a young guy mistake. Yeah. Last kickoff. Um, they, they looked at it like, we've got to get away from this and. Coach Cal wasn't going to make that mistake twice. <laughs> so here we are, first down and 10 from our own 37 and a half yard line. And nearly picked off, pass intended for Andrew Campbell. Flag is down. My probably going to be holding. I'm here. assuming that positioning is going to be holding. The only p other possibility is, you know, a 
illegal use of hands or something like that. And it is a hold against OBA. Okay. Oh, I didn't say. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there at the was 45. at the very back. Yeah. So that's offsetting holding pass interference penalties by both teams. So we're going to replay first down as I don't, a first and ten. I don't know if that was if that was supposed to be pass interference or uh, defensive holding. It, yeah. Because it, that's at the forty, and them. it was and he was getting the ball around the thirty, and so unless he went it, to throw it and it didn't, it, yeah, the flag it didn't, didn't come go out where or it whatever. Wanted. Yeah. Um. So, um, uh, that was of all the things that have happened since we switched quarters. This was this is really the first time that we've had the wind, that we've had the ball to do something with this wind. Yeah. And that's a reception by Schneider crossing midfield at the 47. I think it's going to, sorry, 49. First down and 10, Trojans. I like what we're seeing here by the Trojans, more passing here. Uh, let, we need to get into the end zone if we want to have a um, – our moment, like perhaps, uh, yeah, maybe the uh, momentum swing. Yeah, I know, I know what you're trying to say, Wyatt, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it. Oh, here we go. Uh, pass complete, complete to Schneider. So, um, what, what Wyatt's saying is, you know, the last thing that you want to happen when you've looked ahead to a, a game like Pioneer. Oh, well, there's a flag down. The last thing you want to happen when you've looked ahead to a game like Pioneer, I see our coaches saying decline. So okay. I think it's against them. Defensive, Defensive holding. holding. And holding and so I'm assuming we're going to decline that. that. That's exactly what's going to. Oh no! Wait, that, no, we, no, that defensive, is defensive holding is from the spot. That is, is from the spot, and so we're yeah. going to get the yardage on that penalty as well. Since we caught it, but we're down twenty-eight to nothing in the second quarter to a team that we were hoping to beat. Yeah, and with our struggles, the last thing we need for confidence is for this to get worse. And I know uh, you know what I'm saying with yeah. a, with a forty-five point rule, we don't want that to happen, and so. Um, we're we're moving the ball using this win to our advantage. Reception made by Schneider. And I will say at the beginning of this game, um, I have heard uh, also players in them say that this might be an easy win or uh, something. And we might have gone into the game with too much confidence in ourselves and kind of slack off in our jobs because... Yeah, you never want to do that, especially when... When I mean you, you yourself have only won one game on the season, and so Silas Rudd, and I know he goes down with those two tacklers, but you know even that's still at least a yard, maybe two yards after reception made, and so um, brings up a third and two. I think that's going to be a. They're calling it a third and three, but that's not three yards. That's that's that's, that's, that's a two, two to one or from something. the four, I believe. So we can get the first down and get a fresh set of downs inside the two, essentially. And and I am I don't know if I said this earlier. I am seeing Ari Pounds over there on the right at the fifty yard line. Flag on the play. Delay of game against. Ah. The Trojans, and that can be a killer, um, absolute killer when you're inside the five, driving for the first time, needing a score to keep in this ball game, and you get backed up five yards, and now it's a third down and roughly seven from the ten. Yeah. Um, you could almost look at this as if it's a third and ten. Because I mean, there's a small chance you that we need can get to get in the, in the end zone, and so that hopefully that doesn't come back and and bite us. And he's, quarterback, he's sack. swallowed up. I think. Uh, let me see the time here on the clock. Seven oh four left in the second. 
I think Coach Kout's probably going to go for it here because this is the most momentum we've had. Um, I can just see him just – because that's good That's good defensive field positioning too, even if we uh, don't get this. And so, yeah, he's definitely going yeah, for it. For sending, sure, definitely. Sending, yeah. It's – it's four down territory. It's four down situation. Um, so, and he, we are, oh boy, we are lucky they are ruling that an incomplete pass. It, it didn't look like an incomplete pass to me, but it might have just uh, been. No, they, they actually are ruling that a quarterback sack, actually. Because if it was an incomplete pass, the line of, the ball would be placed where it originally was. Yeah, so I guess but a, a I, sack. I guess they're ruling him that his knee was down. Or I don't think that was the case because he was falling backwards, and so his backside would have been the first thing to hit. So I guess they're um, just saying that he's down before and 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 that's going to be another Mustang touchdown. One play, big score. That's the second play that the moment that, and yeah, second play that uh, one they've cut it back because no one was there, and on the on the first play too. Well, no, maybe the last one wasn't, but they've had two touchdowns off of cutting it back. Update on the volleyball score. I am saying we are down 20 to 24 in the second set. Um, two point conversion attempt is no good, but the damage is being done 34 to nothing. Pioneer. And so now here we are, hoping to have picked up a victory in this game, and we're now 11 points away. Um, in the second quarter from being run ruled and so not uh, and to be honest Wyatt that that delay of game penalty where we were having some momentum and then it killed us um, yeah and that's and we just, got no points out of a drive that we had to have a we had to get points there yeah and and that that that's was just yeah. that's just rookie mistakes um, essentially because You've got to get to the line, and like the moment that you, the moment that it looked like everyone has like their uh, wrist band thing of like where the play, like what plays you have and stuff. So like, coach tells uh, the quarterback what play, what play number. Everyone looks at it, and then they get down into where they need to be. And the moment that happens, get down where you need to be and stop walking around and looking at everyone. And you need to know where you're at too, where to go. Yeah. And on that delay of game I did see that Cal was having to direct some people to know like where to go and that fraction of a the time they weren't able to get the snap yeah. off in time yeah you could see the ball was in the air ready to be caught but they just didn't get it off in time and uh, if you just do your job here that wouldn't have happened and so yeah and before this kick um, update from Sand Springs the Lady Trojans have dropped the second set and are now in a two-set hole. Um, and if we're going to advance on to the next round of the state tournament, we have to uh, win three straight against a team that has beaten us for two straight. And so um, has been done, can be done, but we are in a hole in Sand Springs as well. And we didn't lose that bad in that second set. It was no, like, we didn't. I think probably in fact, 20 we to led 25. half the first set. Yeah. And so. Um, led half the first set. Yeah. This one we lost, I'm guessing, because last Texas says 24 tw or 20 24. So I'm guessing we lost 20 25. So. Yeah. It's, it's still like. Who knows? Maybe there could have been just a couple like. Yeah. Bad mistakes a, a or something. A play here, a play there. Yeah. That, that shouldn't have happened or something. And, yeah. Yeah. And so. Who knows? We could just fix some of those mistakes and come back in in these next couple uh, rounds. So that pass was incomplete. Andrew Campbell nearly came up with it. Um, in fact, the the refs I, it looked like from a distance they kind of conferred that he did indeed 
trap that. Yeah. And so second down and 10. And that was just a diving catch there um, for Andrew Campbell, trying to trying to catch it, but, yeah, falls incomplete. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's a late hit right there. Definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely a yes. late hit. He was down, and then the guy led with his head. And yeah, he did. He him. Led, I mean, it was a it was a helmet to helmet as Silas Rudd made the reception, and and just the positioning he was in when he made the reception, he just fell to his knees and braced for impact. And um, he was hit and, by the first guy, but the first like yeah, that the, one was the, completely okay. But then the second guy came in and. And didn't really show took a shot. Yeah, didn't show any signs of slowing down or anything. And they are calling that targeting. I don't know who that was against. Um, we're probably fixing to find out. Um, is is targeting in high school an automatic ejection? I don't think so. Because I don't there's think no, so Because either. there's no uh, video, replay. video replay to tell yep. if, he was, if it was purposeful or not. I just think... It's just a 15-yard penalty, yeah. and who knows? Maybe you can only have two or something like that in a game. Maybe it's like a personal foul. And although the consequences of targeting um, are the same, I mean, you can do some serious injuries to people. Yeah. Um, they're also much more inexperienced players, too, um, just, just making a bad decision. And Schneider's going to take that into the end zone. They haven't signaled yet, and now they now did. Now they did. So Coy Schneider on the I lost track, um, the the roughly a twenty no uh, yeah a twenty five or so yard reception and uh, run after catch. That was a good quick pass. It was back in the pocket. Uh, Cal was back in the pocket for probably one to two seconds, and then just saw. Uh, uh, Coy opened up, and Coy was able just to run that along the outside right to the pylon, and I think he had a, uh, had a dude to try to get in the way. He's going to get in, and that's a much-needed eight points oh, yeah. for, the, for the Trojan football team as that's going to make the score 34-8, to eight. And, um, and I'm telling you, Wyatt, with, with um, we – offensively if you count that drive where we drove um over 50 yards i believe it was roughly 60 55 to 60 yards down the field and had that one delay of game pen game penalty that um backed us up five yards got us like flustered i think and we just didn't yeah. get the touchdown um, we like if you count that to where that's a a good successful drive, we look differently. Yeah, when we have the wind at our favor, and so <laughs> it really would have been beneficial to get some points out of that last drive. Yeah, because that would have made it potentially thirty four to sixteen, which is half their score. And so um, we we really need to take advantage. What what is the time? There's like five minutes and five fifty six. Yeah. So half the uh, second quarter is still remaining. But the problem is, is we have allowed them to score on their first or second uh, play on. How many consecutive possessions in a row? Three, probably. At Roughly. least two. At least maybe two. Three. I think it was three. There's been some big plays, both by Murrow and Doyle. And so... Um, kick goes out of bounds. I think they're yeah. just going to back him up and have him kick again, it looks like. That's what I would do with this wind, because even at that, it still might be a touchback. Yeah. First time that we've seen uh, the Trojans uh, KO out here, kickoff. Um, 
Yeah, and we'll we'll it, see it again it, at the beginning of the second half. There is a huge gap between the Pioneer and then the third, yeah. or the final guy. He, if, which, if, because if we of could, the wind. If, if we could pooch it right. Ah, oh, darn, we almost got there. Onside kick. Recovered by number. I think that's 11. No, that was number two. Number two? Oh, okay, 11 was on the other is, side. Which is, I know we've called his name, Gabe Fannin. Number two, Gabe Fannin um, on that recovery. Um, and what, Pioneer's going to start in OBA territory. Our defense got to carry over this momentum that we had on offense, and if we can carry it over, we could get back in this ball game. And as we say that, another huge run by number five, still on his feet. And we have number Judah Hopper tripped him up, uh, or missed the tackle. Andrew Campbell tripped him up, and uh, Andrew caused had him, him to by go his, down by his pants. I'm pretty sure trying to get him to go down, and then. Slipped, and then Judah Hopper, I'm pretty sure, picked him up and then finally caused him to dive forward. But what's making this Pioneer offense so um, deadly for us is um, their size. Like, I'm, like, most of the reason why they're able to run the ball is because they can just open up gaps down the middle or have a big lead blocker around the outside to go kick somebody off or open up gaps because we're a small team. Like, we don't have size at all. We're just fast right. and quick, and that's all there is. And so when we verse a team like Pioneer who has a bunch of big, muscular guys, it becomes a really big challenge. And Doyle's going to go in. Sorry about this wall here, folks. Uh, don't have much to work with in this. Normally, uh, we don't like to be. Um, I mean, as the commentators like to be in um, the the press box, but we we don't like the camera to be. Yeah. Normally, we're able to set the camera on the the roof of the press box or something, and um, that option's just not available. But I'm kind of thankful today. But. Uh, Fannin takes the two-point conversion into the end zone, and that's going to be 42 to eight. They have um, we're uh, Pioneer is also streaming through Squirtle on PioneerMustangs.tv as well, and so um, in that situation, you have you have two um, teams updating the the score for the same game. And so uh, Pioneer is updating the score. They they just did, um, and forty two to eight right now. In the second quarter of action, and uh, we're almost we're an hour and nineteen minutes into this ball game, and and I am receiving word third set in Sand Springs for the Lady Trojans, and we are down one to ten. Or ten to one, I should say. Um, so we have a we have some work to do in Sand Springs, Coach Roth and the Lady Trojans. And I've seen the Lady Trojans have some comebacks. Of yes, down down even. I think one was like fifteen in one set. And we came back because we were just didn't give up and yep. just. One uh, thing that can be said: those girls have grit. Yeah. Um, and uh, they do not give up until it's over, and so um, we can rest assured they will continue to fight. And that kick is uh, downed by Silas Rudd at the 39-yard line. So let's see if OBA. Trojans can can make up uh, that eight point eight point score on I believe that was three plays we referenced 
It's taken him only one or two plays, and that's going to be a false start against Schneider as he just uh, got a little he, too he, antsy yeah, he, there. Yep. It was just a split second, but it was noticeable. And that's why, like, when you're a wide receiver and you're out in the outside and you can't hear properly and you try to time it up just right, it doesn't, it doesn't work a lot of the time. You just have to watch that ball, and then the moment the ball moves, that's when you... Oh! That should be a pass interference there. Yeah, they're, I think they're, they're going to call it that it was... It was he got there at the same time, but that he grabbed him. It really almost – it wasn't a horse collar, but it looked like one as he kind of clotheslined him. Yeah. He got his arm around him at the neck, and and but I, uh, I think it was a split second too soon, but it was not called. And that is a hard call to make yeah. because, like, the ball was up in the air, and so you can't really see, like, when it was there. Yep. And so – you can't argue with that. Pass broken up by uh, um, number. Is that number twelve? That's a a number I don't believe I've called tonight. Number twelve is. Oh yeah, Eli Vanover. I believe he scored. A two-point conversion, maybe, um, earlier in this game. This game does, goodness, it just seems like it's dragging on. I mean, we're still in the second quarter. 4.34 to go in the second quarter. Screen pass, ah. shoestring tackle, but it's enough for just a one-yard gain. And was that third down or was that fourth down? Okay, that brings up a yeah, that fourth bring, down. Yeah, that brings and, up fourth down. Um, 14. Looks like we might be just going. Yeah, we're going for it here. Yeah, Coach Chaos thinking, um, I mean, We've I got guess, it. what do we have to lose? We, we have to. Yeah, we have to go for it because if we give the ball back at our, gonna our rate score. right now, yeah. they're going to score again. Ah, and That pass is going to fall incomplete. And... Uh, you know, if the on a windless day, that might have been complete. Be, but it looked like it the just wind kept just, sailing. Yeah, it just so kept going. Coy could not adjust. Like it just kept hanging in the air, and he wasn't able to get there. Um, so that is a turnover on downs. First down and ten for the Mustangs from the Trojan thirty-six. And that's going to go for a touchdown. Another first first uh, play by possession. Touchdown by uh, the Mustangs. It's just not sure what's going on there. They've ran it around the outside yeah. of that exact same out. I think they've ran the same play three times. Yeah, and and, and that's all they need to do. And as we can, and like it doesn't seem like we're adjusting or trying and, to do anything. I mean, uh, Coy was the only one over there, literally the only one there, and he's coming from the safety position. Yeah, so someone, so someone's like, not I like, in the right position the or something. Corner and the defensive end, they were so far away from the play that Coy Schneider was the only one who had any. Even a remote chance to get him. Yeah, and Coy is playing more like a free safety. He's not. Yes. He's not in the back. And so, like, and, and the sa like the free safety is the only one that knew where the ball was going. It was like everyone else was just kind of looking for it, but not finding it. So that two point conversion was no good. I was it no good. I thought it was, but they're not updating it. They're they're. They're keeping it 48. We were talking, um, and I I thought it looked like it would have been good, but apparently it was not. 48 to 8. So here we are in the first half of action, down 40. Have we had any more update on the uh, Lady uh, Trojans volleyball? Um, 
Let me look. Yes. 15 to 3 them. Okay, um, so and so this third set it does have to go to 25. Fifth set's the only one that would go to 15. So um we are down 12 in a set that is literally do or die for us. Um the season is on the line. Um I guess you could call it uh well, this is the this, uh, not match point, but match set for them. Like yeah. they, they win. Uh, Christian Heritage wins this set, and we go home. Coy Schneider downs that onside kick, or maybe mistakenly squibbed kick, or whatever we want to call that. At the, they're going to down it at the forty. Trojan's got to get some movement here on offense. Yeah, if we, we have if to. We, if we, we have don't, to score. if we don't, and they score another touchdown, yeah, that's ball be, game. That's at ball game. Time. Yeah, that's ball game at half. So Trojans have three minutes and forty three seconds to get to the other side of the field and score a touchdown. And 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 he chaos just, got nowhere. Coverage was there. Um. Def or a defensive Man, line like, was getting pressure. Looks like they might going to be holding here because there's a flag yep. down near the line of scrimmage. So I'm guessing they saw some holding here. Holding yep. Holding against the Trojans. Yep. And so what it looked like to me, one, I, I, I was paying attention to the to uh, Kaot, but soon as the ball was released, I looked downfield and um. Three, really all three, Pioneer secondary, they were back deeper than our receivers. Yeah. And in that situation with this wind, if you sail that, that pass is picked. Um, and so just nowhere to go. And and when you're scrambling, running for your life, um, you just don't, you don't have anywhere to go with that ball. So... <laughs> it but looks that like, is a that is a hold, so it backs it. Yeah. We still get a first down, but it's now first and twenty. The pioneer receivers are or, uh, corners are back more than normal as Cal slings it down the. Um, that should have that should have been a pass interference. He was Boy he turns was around, it hit his left, right hand, yeah. and he didn't have access to his left hand to even you know bring that ball in because. The defender had his left hand um, wrapped up, and the the referee couldn't see it with his position, um, but it most certainly, I believe, should have been a pass interference call, but um, second down and 20. The Pioneer Mustangs are back, like their corners are back more than normal as more of a cover six option here. Ah. Uh, Okay, incomplete pass, third down and 20. Um, okay, update from Sand Springs. Unfortunately, I just received word that we lost in three sets. So Lady Trojans um, are done for the year and at the state tournament, not advancing on to the second round, and there is a flag on this play. We'll see what it is. It looks like it's going to be on us. But... Um, but valiant effort, great season, great careers for um, Wyatt. They're your classmates. So, B.B. Colby, Aaliyah Hopper, Carson Jenkins, Kara Martin, um, uh, Valentina. Uh, who else am I missing, Wyatt? Uh, you say Alexis Pendleton? Alexis Pendleton. Um, I think we got them all. Um, and oh another my, holding. incomplete pass, another flag on the play. And I'm at, at this point, should Pioneer just like I don't know, but uh, well, I I would keep you know it that old adage, dance with the one who brung you, um, because that what's working for them is exactly what's happening. Yeah. So 
they just need to keep doing what they're doing because um, keeps backing us up and look like they did not. I mean, we have let's see 10, 20, 30 yards. 30 yards. We have a third down yeah, and 30 20 yards. coming up. In fact, I think they declined that. Yeah, they did. Um, screen pass to Hopper. Picks up about three yards after the catch. Uh, what in the world? <laughs> uh, it looked like Ian Burnett and another guy were uh, – Target smack, and so he threw his – Ian Burnett threw his hands up and just fell backwards to try to Yeah, I don't, do I don't know something. what Burnett was doing there. Probably trying um, just to be – uh, like to draw a penalty or something to try to be um, – you know, look yeah, make it look like it's that's not shoved or something. So fourth down, and I'm – this is – and and I hate to say it, but that's going to be it, – it won't be long if, if our defense can't stop them. And we have – they have 23 yards to, to go. Um, and they've scored on the first, second, or third play from scrimmage in the last several drives. It's not looking good for your Trojans to make it to the second half. So – um. Yeah, so uh, back to the volleyball discussion. Carson Jenkins, B.B. Colby, Alexis Pendleton, Kara Martin, Valentina, Aaliyah Hopper, great careers. Way to represent OBA Athletics and everything you've done on the volleyball court. And up to number four, cuts back, and he is going to be brought down. About the 15 yards. Brought down by Jacoby and Coy. And uh, third down, and looks like three coming up. Look like they they are they're giving it to him. That was close, but they're giving it to him. So now it's first down and ten. Our Trojans are doing better now here, trying to hang on for dear life to they, try to make it to the. Uh, well, notice um, number three. And number, number five's not five, out there. Five is not out there. Um, I'm not seeing three on the sidelines. Nope, I do see him. He has his helmet off. And so they are they are going with their first string offense minus their two starting running backs. Um, going to the air for the first time. Ian Burnett, but that's going to be a flag. I, did I see a flag fly? I saw this um, referee in the back, the back judge. Yes. Personal foul face mask face on mask the Trojans. Face mask against the Trojans. Which is going to give them a first and goal. First and goal, so that will be about the four-yard line. Yeah, about the – put oh, six-yard line. And with – Six yard line with 39 seconds left of the second quarter. So if they or of the first half, so if they get if they punch this in, um, the Trojans won't have any time to uh, get down the field to score another touchdown. So yeah, the clock we, might be is, our only um, weapon here, but it's not going to be. So the Trojans will have 35 seconds to try to get down the field and. Uh, Score a touchdown here, so to try to uh, go into the second half with a touchdown, hopefully, and uh, we get the ball back at the end. No, no, we don't. They 
Pioneer gets the ball back at the end Pioneer of the second half. Pioneer gets the ball at the beginning so, of the second half because of the defer. So if Trojans do punch this in, our defense next or after halftime will have to step up because that's also a do or die uh, situation. And that's and they punch it in, so that's going to make it a forty-eight point deficit. So, uh, they haven't updated the score, but that's going to be fifty-six to eight. Yeah. 48-point deficit. Um, the only shot we have of going to the second half is a to, score in, uh, to score a touchdown um, in the next 33 seconds of action, which we do, we do have the wind in our favor. We are a passing team. Um, it is possible. Yeah. But we, we might just go it, hail mary down the it, whole thing. To be honest, it there is a reality that delaying the inevitable. Um, yeah, we're down forty eight points. I wonder if coach will do like well, what we did in the ceiling game, or um, kind of just we've been beat. We're not playing good at all, and you risk injury, and we risk injury. So and with an with an already pretty injury prone team, as we have like yeah. six or seven people out. You're you're, and so will coach just be like, it's we're just yeah, like what you said, delaying the inevitable and poten- the, potentially uh, taking out someone worth like with someone that's a, one of our starters or something it like sounds that. Sounds like so, quitting and giving up, um, but that. That has to co- cross a coach's mind um, when you delay the inevitable and just again end up getting another player hurt. And so um, Judah Hopper uh, takes the kick up to the 30, 33? Yeah, 33 yard line. Caught the ball around the 29, so about a four yard uh, return. Looks like the Trojans are going for it. We're looking like we're going in the more Hail Mary formation here. Pass fell right behind Silas Silas Rudd's um, uh, no, whatever it's called. Feet? No. They went past him, but like I don't know how to describe it. I can't think of the word. Yeah, in, in short, long story short, uh, incomplete pass right by, right beside uh, Silas Rudd, and pass thrown back to, to Silas Rudd. Rudd. He's still going, and he's going to be dragged out of bounds at the thirty-five yard line. Or that 30. stops the clock with twelve seconds remaining. And so um, we might have a chance here. We might have a chance. And, uh, you know, going back to the um, a coach's decision about delaying the inevitable, you, you never want to teach your kids to just fold. And so um, show and fight here. And that's exactly what young guys need. And that's going to be intercepted. And um, that – is all the time on the clock taking us to the end of the first half half time but that is going to be the end of the ball game with the trojans being defeated 56 to 8 by the pioneer mustangs good fight at the end of the ball game hopefully next week we're able to take over some of the key lessons that we learned here um and so hopefully next week we'll be able to improve and do better so and next week we do is it another thursday game it's another thursday game it's a thursday night game um it is a school night that night with a thursday night game um but uh, it is the laverne tigers at home uh, coming into enid uh to to play at commitment field um so uh we are going to uh to log off here and uh, be sure to uh, congratulate the Lady Trojans volleyball team on a successful uh, season, whether they uh, loss or not today. Um, a state tournament qualification 
is nothing to, to uh, hang your heads about. And so um, congratulate the Lady Trojans on a successful season, successful careers for those senior girls. And, um, and we will be back at Commitment Field, back at obatrojans.tv next Thursday night, October 20th at 7 p.m. against Laverne.